Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. Uh, hold on, I can't do this. Much better. Yeah, that makes such a difference. A couple of the corals are annoyed, but yeah, the glass is all dirty. I worked all weekend, night shifts, so when I do that, I don't touch my tank. And of course, before that, I threw my back out. So all the work I planned to do last week didn't happen. So today, we're doing all the stuff I wanted to do last week. Big goal is to dose this tank with fluconazole. I've got a hair algae problem, which this might help with, but I also saw some bryopsis. So I'm hitting it early, I'm hitting it hard. I've got five bottles of fluconazole. Fluconazole is an antifungal medication primarily used for bryopsis removal in the reef aquarium. If you put this stuff in your tank, it will kill your bryopsis. But it also has an interesting side effect in that a lot of people say it helps with hair algae, including myself. I did a video a couple years ago, and it was really a tale of two tanks. I dosed fluconazole in the 29 gallon, and it completely eliminated the bryopsis and the hair algae. That was sweet. At the same time, I dosed the 210, and it did nothing. But this is when my tank was crashing. Nitrates and phosphates were high, algae was growing out of control, and I think that was the problem. Well, it's been a couple of years, and the algae is still in the tank, but it's growing really slow. Nitrates and phosphates are really low. So I've got bryopsis in the tank, I've got fluconazole, we'll dose it, we'll kill the bryopsis, and hopefully we'll get that nice benefit of killing hair algae. It's been a little over a week since my last video and the tanks are looking pretty good. Remember, the goal with the last video was to set me up for today. Basically, all the corals are moved over. I know the glass looks terrible. Like I said, I've been working, but the algae growth in here has been minimal. Yes, there's algae in there. That's what we're trying to get rid of, but the growth has been minimal. Here's that blacked out tank, and for the most part, it's working really well. But you can see up here where the light's coming through, the algae's still holding on strong. So before we dose the fluconazole, we are going to suck all the detritus out of this tank and try to get rid of that algae. To do this work, I've gotta shut my skimmer off. So now's a great time to clean it. It's pretty dirty. So we'll clean this up. I've decided I'm not gonna pull it. I'm just gonna give it a good clean in place. So since I gotta pull the carbon GFO, now's a great time to soak this stuff in vinegar. So we're gonna pull that. We'll also take the opportunity to pull the old dosing pump and we'll try to remount the Milwaukee pH controller. I just did a bunch of sucking. But as you can see, I got most of the algae, most of the detritus out of here. So you can see this valve up here has Pasolipora growing on it. This stuff looks dead, but there's a good chance it's gonna survive. It's been here like 10 days under the dark, and I've done this to this coral multiple times, and as you can see, it's decided to grow on that valve. That valve is also how I control water in and out of this tank. So to do my water change, I closed that valve, siphoned all the detritus and algae out. Now to refill the tank, I just turn that valve on, and then I'll turn the valve on for my salt water mixing tank, which will feed the water back over to the sump. Pretty easy setup. I never have to carry a bucket. So now I gotta clean my skimmer. To do that, I'm just gonna shut the air off. I'm not actually gonna shut the skimmer itself off, 
but I gotta shut it off for the fluconazole. Anyways, now I use an Aqua C skimmer. It's an old school downdraft skimmer. And for anybody who thinks they don't work, would you like to do the skimmer cup challenge? Oh, it's nasty, but look at all that skim mate. It's thick, it's stinky, it's nasty. This is why I use Aqua C. Tank on the right, I've got most of the detritus out. The idea is just to keep nutrients low as hopefully we kill bryopsis and algae because that will spike my nutrients a little and we're not gonna have the skimmer up for three days. But we do have algae growing down here, so we'll have a pretty good test. You can see some of these frag plugs have algae growing on them. So that's the kind of stuff we're working to fix. The frag tank down below, we've got algae on the wall. I don't see much bryopsis down here, but definitely got algae on the wall. Otherwise, I got things looking pretty good. Skimmer is nice and clean. As you can see, it's still running. I'll dose the fluconosol. All I did was shut the airline off. It shouldn't give me enough air to foam, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I just tidied up the calcium reactor. I removed the bucket, the doser. I got the controller remounted. I'm just noticing right now my temp sensor fell off, so I gotta remount my thermometer. Um, carbon, GFO, or I'll soak it in vinegar. While far from perfect, this looks way better than it did. It's less embarrassing, it really was bad. But the tanks are coming along, we'll dose that fluconosol, and hopefully we'll get rid of the algae issues, and that'll really set me up for success in the filtration room. It's time to dose the reflux, and the bottle basically comes with 10 of these pills in them. So I've gotta open them all up, get all of the fluconosol out of here, each one of these pills is good for 10 gallons. I've got 450 gallons total water volume. That's a 210 display with all of the water and filtration down below. All right, now I've got the tedious, boring process of opening up all of these capsules and getting the actual fluconosol out of here. This is the only way I have personally found that this stuff works very well. It is annoying, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so there's all of those tabs of fluconosol opened up. There's my powder. I gotta mix this with water now and we'll add it to a high flow portion of the tank. As you can see, it's evening. The lights are going dim. I've been working on my tank all afternoon, getting things cleaned up, taking care of the algae, getting rid of all of that excess equipment I'm not using, just fixing problems. And that's the goal, continue to fix problems. So before this day is over, I've got two more goals. First, the fish haven't eaten. So we might as well feed them and I bet you wanna watch. The other thing is, we've got two fish that Will brought over that are done with their quarantine and ready to go into their tank. So we might as well do that now. All right, clownfish is looking great. We just gotta catch him so we can put him in the 24 gallon nano. Come on, fishy. I probably would like to use a different thing other than a net, but a net's what I have on me. So we're gonna use a net. Come on, fishing. I didn't get the glass clean on the 24 today. It's like I said, it's been all weekend. I've been working on the big tank, but there we go. There's that new clownfish going home. Now I gotta catch that Watchman Goby. He is gonna be quite the difficult catch. There he is. Well, 
The real consideration with the Watchman Gobi is where do I put it? Um, Jawfish and Go Watchman Gobies have been real jumpy in my own personal experience. 24 gallon doesn't have a lid, even though I do have a pistol shrimp in there for him, I think we'll put him in the big tank. To send you out, here's some beautiful video of the fish eating. If you want to see how the fluconazole treatment turns out, well, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you liked this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. But now, without further ado, here's the fish eating. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother.